Well, it's, it's 2 o'clock, so we'll get started. Uh, welcome and thank you for coming today. I'm Brian Reed. I'm the city administrator here in Brandon. Uh, we also have Mark Mayer here, who is the administrator for the drinking water program for the South Dakota DENR. Uh, the city of Brandon, we scheduled this briefing today to provide information on water quality related to levels of radionuclides, specifically gross alpha, and combined radium-226 and 228 in the municipal water system. On June 28, 2019, a social media site posted the results of a water sample taken from a location here in Brandon. They are shown here. Um, this is the first page. The results show, I've highlighted the, the pertinent information pertaining to radionuclides. The results show a level of gross alpha of 5.89 picocuries per liter that is below the EPA safe drinking water standards of 15 picocuries per liter. It shows combined radium of 5.794 picocuries per liter. That does exceed the EPA safe drinking water standard acts of 5 picocuries per liter. If you'll notice, radium 226 has a, has a, a value of 2.276 picocuries, and radium 228 is 3.518. So you combine those two together to get the combined radium result. So those do exceed or show that uh, we exceed the five picocuries per liter limit. Also on the bottom highlighted, the results exceed the EPA safe drinking water standards. The posted results have caused the South Dakota DNR to receive complaints about the elevated levels of radionuclides shown in the test results that were posted. The city of Brandon also took a water sample and sent it to the South Dakota Public Health Laboratory on June 26, 2019, specifically for testing the gross alpha radium-226 and radium-228. It typically takes six to eight weeks for those test results to be completed. The city received the final results on August 9th. The city refrained from commenting on the social media posts until we had received the final test results of our own sample as we will only provide verified final results to the public as we understand that it is our duty to provide true and correct information to the public. More of those tests, we'll get to those. The South Dakota Public Health Laboratory became aware of the test results posted on the social media site and began an investigation of the results as they did not appear to be similar to the preliminary results that the Public Health Lab had found. Uh, the, the state lab inquired if they had performed the tests that are shown on the social media website. Midcontinent confirmed that they had in fact performed those tests. Midcontinent reviewed the test results posted on the social media site and also confirmed that the results shown on the site were not the same results that Midcontinent had supplied to their customer. The results shown for gross alpha, radium-226, and radium-228 on the social media site had been altered, as well as the statements regarding compliance with the EPA safe drinking water standards. Again, the pertinent information is highlighted. The gross alpha shown on the test results was a 3.89. 
So whoever altered these test results added two picocuries per liter. Radium-226 was shown at 0.276, not the 2.276. The radium-228 results were shown as 0.518, not the 3.518. Whoever posted this on social media altered the results to show that the city was in violation of the federal drinking water standards. Um, also, if you look down at the bottom, the results read, results meet the EPA safe drinking water standards. The test results that the city received on August 9th show that our gross alpha was 5.4 picocuries per liter. And both radium 226 and 228 were reported below one, which typically indicates they're non-detectable. Both of those results on the actual lab test from Mid-Continent and the public health lab in Pier show that the city of Brandon's water is in compliance with the safe drinking water standards. In fact, they are well below the standards of the federal drinking water standards. These concerted efforts to provide false information pertaining to the water quality and brand and provide the latest example that social media cannot always be trusted to provide true and correct information. If any individual with the city of Brandon had altered our tests, those like those posted on the social media site, that individual would be criminally prosecuted. That is a violation of state law. The city of Brandon has and will continue to provide water that meets and exceeds all primary drinking water standards set by the EPA for the health and safety of our citizens. My family, including my dog, and I will continue to drink the water supplied by the city of Brandon. Now I'd like to introduce Mark Mayer with the South Dakota Department of uh, Environment and Natural Resources for, for some additional comments. Well, good afternoon. I appreciate everybody coming today. Um, I just do want to uh, let you know um, at the state we are responsible for implementing the Federal Safe Drinking Water Act on behalf of EPA and we do regulate all of the community uh, public water systems in the state of South Dakota and we require them to submit samples in accordance with the Safe Drinking Water Act. Um, in Brandon's case they are uh, sa sampling as required. We provide them a list of results or of parameters that they need to sample for each year, and they have done that faithfully and repeatedly. Um, we do have an annual award that we give out to water systems that meet all of the compliance requirements of the Safe Drinking Water Act. We do that every year. We've been doing it for 18 years, and. Uh, the city of Brandon is one of only 35 systems in the state that has received that 18 consecutive years in a row. So uh, I think that's a testament to the dedication and the, the uh, stewardship that the city has demonstrated over the years to comply with the standards. There are a number of standards, not just radionuclides, but over, over 90 different parameters that they sample for and test on the on a frequency that's determined by the Safe Drinking Water Act. So um, we do provide a report to the city of Brandon each year, an annual water quality report that they can, or they're required to distribute that uh, or make it available each year. And you may have seen that before, but the, uh, there are levels on that uh, report that indicate similar results to the, uh, to the two correct sample parameter uh, readouts. The, uh, this information is also available on our website and so if a, if a citizen is concerned about their water quality we, we take calls all the time and can look things up for them if, if they want to hear it from the state and not from the system themselves. We also have all this information uh, out on our website and I can, can show people where they can find that uh, 
in the future if they if they're interested. But uh, again, we we're uh, here to stand behind Brandon. The the water system is in compliance with all of the Safe Drinking Water Act requirements, and uh, their water quality meets those standards. And and so with that, I don't have any other remarks unless there's any questions people have. I don't know how we want to do that. Yeah, if there's any questions, we will certainly attempt to answer them. You said uh, Brandon is sampling water as often as required. Can you talk about the timeline of water sampling and what's required? I can. The uh, There's a number of different parameters that are that are required to be sampled for and the the frequency of that sampling is established in the Safe Drinking Water Act. So in the case of the radionuclides, for instance, they're required to sample every three years, and that's based on the levels from the test. So because they uh, are below the standard, but because they're greater than 50% of the standard, they're on a triennial basis. The uh, If they were at below like non-detect levels or below the detection limit levels then they would do every nine years. If they were ab above the standard then they're in what we call increase monitoring where they would sample quarterly. So it's it's very complex the frequency of sampling but uh, but this is what we call a more of a chronic contaminant so it the health effects associated with it are are a chronic exposure, not an acute or an immediate risk where the city has to sample for like bacteriological quality every month. And, and then, because that you could have an acute risk to health if you drank water and it was bacteriologically unsafe, then you might get sick immediately where the exposure to radionuclides is more of a chronic exposure. So. The standards are established by EPA, and these levels the, that uh, were discussed, the five picocuries per liter for combined radium and the 15 picocuries per liter for gross alpha, those are established with uh, the end result being if you were to drink two liters of that water over a lifetime or 70 years, and you were in excess of those amounts, your likelihood of uh, getting cancer or having negative health impacts would be a 1 in 10,000 greater chance. So so they're very conservative, very protective of public health, but again, those are established by the federal EPA, and then the state of South Dakota adopts those uh, federal standards as the state standards. And we do have a state law that requires that we cannot be more stringent than the federal standards. So. So most of our, well, all of our Federal Safe Drinking Water Act requirements are adopted by reference. So we reference the federal requirements into our state code, so. Brian, mm -hmm. uh, is there anything about the documents that were posted on social media that led you to believe right away that they were fabricated as opposed to just the results themselves and based on the bonding or you know, formatting on the documents? I'm, I'm my family and staff will tell you that I am not up to speed on on that type of stuff. So no, nothing nothing stood out to me other than it did cause me concern that we did exceed that that limit for combined radium. But it's actually the an employee at the state health lab that took a look at it and caused her to have concerns and wanted to verify those results because they were somewhat different than what her preliminary results were coming back at. So she is the one that actually reached out to Mid Continent and confirmed with them that they had done the test. I'm, I'm not going to comment on, on that at this time. Are you aware, do you, do you know the, the uh, website? Did you put it on the website? It's an anonymous website. Um, you know, Find out. possibly. Um, you know, once again, it gets back to my comment about social media. Who you're going to believe a, an anonymous website with absolutely nothing to lose or two state certified labs? Uh, with their integrity and their and their licenses on the line, so no, we don't. At this point in time, we can't confirm who posted it 
on the website or on the Facebook site. Can you confirm if it was the dirt? Um, yes. Are any of these numbers going to actually change throughout the year, different times that you sample water? They, they will vary. Um, if you notice, the, la the, the test that was taken for gross alpha uh, in the end of uh, first part of May came back with a test result of three, and the, and the sample that we took in June would, came back with it at a, I can't read it, 3.8. So it's off, I mean, there, it will vary depending on the, the type of water. The problem with, with these radionuclide tests, it takes six to eight weeks to get the results back. So what the water that we tested at that point in time isn't what's going through the plant today. So we've actually, our public works director, Raleigh Hookey and myself have talked, along with Tammy Jansmer, our city engineer, about additional testing, specifically for radionuclides. We'll take a look at uh, testing on at least a quarterly basis. Um, that's that's up for the council to decide. We haven't we haven't uh, put that in front of them yet. Yes. Um, is it possible that the rain levels just vary between the two tests as well? No, these these two are the same test. Right, but at different times. They are not at different times. They are exactly the same test. The results shown here were altered. Midcontinent has confirmed that. Okay. Has Midcontinent confirmed that that was actually the Granite City water? That yes. That, yep, it is. They know, they know the customer. They will not provide the name of the customer or the location of the testing. That is confidential for, for them. But they did confirm it was from here in Brandon. How did the health department uh, staff member know to call the Rapid City Company? When she looked at the, the, the social media site, she recognized the format of the report. So apparently each lab, if you notice, there's a different format from the state health lab to Midcontinent. So she recognized the format and called them, and, and that's when they confirmed it. Would Midcontinent confirm, would they confirm to you? Sure, I've got an, I've got an email from them. Anything else? Have you been in contact with law enforcement? I mean, obviously, you said um, if they had altered an official record, you could prosecute criminally. Mm -hmm. Are there a terroristic element to spreading fear, unfounded uh, concern? There's, there is concern um, any time that someone falsifies records to try to undermine the consumer confidence in the drinking water. You know, that's, that's worse than yelling fire in a crowded theater. Um, you know, the First Amendment protects a lot of things. They don't protect lies or defamation. Um, so I, I can't confirm that that would be investigated. Um, we may put this on the, in the city council packet for Monday night. Uh, you know, there were some concerns raised on social media last night that, oh, you're having this press briefing at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. None of us can get there. We will put this on the agenda for Monday night. So any citizen that's interested in coming in and looking this information over and discussing it with myself, staff, or council, we'd be more than happy to do that. As far as the, the social media website or sites themselves, we, we have no control over them. You know, unfortunately, like I said, people can post what they want, true or not. Um, it's up to you, the consumers, to differentiate and get your information from trusted news sources. Uh, I may be a little bit biased against social media. My wife will vouch for that. Um, you know, I'll take my, my news sources from all of the news stations. I don't concentrate on one. I'll get it from everybody. So... Any other questions? 
Well, if not, thank you for coming. We appreciate it. This is a, a very important topic for the city of Brandon. We take this very, very seriously. Um, you know, the A2S report is is complete. It's in the final draft form, uh, and we will be moving forward with some of the suggestions or recommendations in that report. So we will be doing some major uh, upgrades in our water infrastructure uh, in the next few years. So thank you for coming.